Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 5.3. We're going to look at complex fractions. Uh, honestly, I think the word complex is not a good description of what we're going to work with. I like to call them multi-storied fractions. And it's something that you should actually be somewhat familiar with because really all this is saying is this fraction of 1 3rd that's in the numerator is divided by this fraction of 2 fifths in the denominator. So to call it a complex fraction, it's just a different way of representing 1 3rd divided by 2 fifths. And if we recall, to do this, we would just multiply by the reciprocal. And if we did that 1 3rd times 5 halves, nothing simplifies. So we just multiply the numerators and the denominators, and we get 5 sixths. So a complex fraction is just a multi-storied fraction. It's just a different way of writing this expression right here. Now, when we deal with polynomials and rational expressions, we might have something that looks like this. We have 4 divided by x divided by 5 divided by 2x. Now, there's two methods of solving these equations. And of these three examples, we're actually going to do them twice, one using method 1 and one using method 2. So for the first one, we're going to look at method 1. Method 1 basically states, simplify the numerator to a single fraction. Well, if we look at this, the numerator is already a single fraction, 4 over x. Second step is, simplify the denominator to a single fraction, in this case, 5 over 2x. It's already a single fraction, so those steps are done. Now we just multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, just like we did in that uh, previous example. So I'm going to take 4 over x times the reciprocal of the bottom. Well, the reciprocal of 5 over 2x would be 2x over 5. And now we're ready to simplify if we can. This x will reduce that x. These numbers have no common factors from denominator to numerator. So we're just going to multiply the numerators. 4 times 2 is 8. 1, because this x reduced to 1, times 5 is 5. So we get 8 fifths. Not too complex, I hope. <clears throat> now if we look at this example, since we're doing method 1, we want to combine the top to a single, numer or a single fraction. So this numerator, we have to find the common denominator of these two values. Well, it would be x. That's the only value in the denominator. So to give this a common, fraction, or a common denominator of x, I'm going to multiply it by x over x, which is essentially just 1. So I'm not changing its value. And I can always think of any constant as being over 1, 3 over 1. So this, I get 3 times x over 1 times x, which is just x minus 2x. And I can simplify that further, because now that they have a common denominator, I can write it as 3x minus 2 over x. Now we do the same thing to the bottom. That's step two. Write this as a single fraction. Well, in the denominator, we have 9x. So that's my common denominator. And I can think of this as x over 1. So I'd get 9x squared minus 4. And 9x times 1 is just 9x. Let me clean that up a bit over 9x. Now that they have a common denominator, I can rewrite them as 9x squared minus 4 over 9x. Now we have a single fraction divided by a single fraction. So we can multiply by the reciprocal. 3x minus 2 over x times the reciprocal of the bottom is going to be 9x over 9x squared minus 4. And hopefully we recall in the previous section, when we multiplied rational expressions, we always wanted to factor and reduce. This here is the difference of squares. 9x squared is 3x times 3x. It's a perfect square. And 4 is a perfect square of 2. So it factors to 3x minus 2, 3x plus 2. And now that we've factored, we're ready to reduce. I see this 3x minus 2 is a common factor to the 3x minus 2. So we reduce those. This factor of x can reduce that factor of x. And now we're ready to multiply together. The only factor left on top is 9. So I'll write it right here. And the factor on the bottom is 3x plus 2. So this is 
the simplified expression of what we started with. And that seems to be a lot of work, right? Well, hopefully when we see method two, maybe we'll see one of them works better than the other. And that would be a little bit easier for us to work with. All right, again, using method one, we're going to combine the numerator to a single fraction. In this case, that's done for us. Then combine the denominator to a single fraction. Well, we have to find that common denominator. And that's going to be x squared, y squared, all those factors. So this would need a y squared over a y squared. And this would need an x squared over an x squared. And now when we simplify that, I didn't have to do anything to the numerator. But the denominator, when we multiply this, we get y squared over x squared y squared plus x squared over x squared y squared. So now that they have the common denominator, I can just combine these terms. y squared plus x squared are both over x squared y squared. So now we have a single fraction divided by a single fraction. We can just multiply by its reciprocal 1 over x times. The reciprocal of this is going to be x squared y squared over y squared plus x squared. And now we're ready to reduce. One of these factors of x can cancel one of those factors of x. And nothing else is going to cancel because, again, these are terms, not factors. So we can't cancel those y's or any other x's. So now I just rewrite it 1 times xy squared and 1 times y squared plus x squared. That is the simplified solution xy squared over y squared plus x squared. So that was method one. We simplify numerator and denominator to single fractions and then multiply by the reciprocal. Method two, we're going to look at these same three examples. Method two simply says, find the LCD of all the fractions involved. Well, this denominator and this denominator, the LCD would be 2x. Because they each contain an x, but this has that factor of 2. So they would all need a factor of 2. So this is my LCD. So once we've determined that, the second step is to multiply all terms by the LCD. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2x and the denominator by 2x. And we simplify it. Well, when I multiply 2x times this quantity, the x's cancel. And I'm left with 2 times 4, which is 8. When I multiply 2x times this quantity, the 2x cancels. Anything divided by itself is 1. So we get 5. And we notice we've already come to the answer, 8 fifths. It's already simplified. And if we recall, that was the answer we got using method 1. Here, we're going to do the same thing. Determine the LCD of all the fractions involved. Well, in the numerator, I have an x. And in the denominator, I have a 9x for that fraction. Well, the LCD is 9x. They each have an x. They both would need a factor of 9. So I'm going to multiply the top by 9x and the bottom by 9x. So when I multiply this, I simply have to distribute 9x times 3 is 27x. 9x times negative 2 over x, the x's would cancel. So I'd have 9 times negative 2. Here, 9 times x would be 9x squared. 9x times negative 4 over 9x, the 9x, 9x's would cancel, leaving me with negative 4. And now, all I have to do is reduce if possible. Well, 27x minus 18, they both have a common factor of 9. So I can factor that out, and I get 3x minus 6. Here, I recognize this as the difference of squares, which would be 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2. And I notice I made a little math error there. If I'm factoring out a 9, this would be a 2. 9 goes into 18 twice. Now I'm ready to reduce. And I can see, well, 3x minus 2 is a factor that's common with 3x minus 2 in the denominator. So those can reduce. What's left is 9 over 3x plus 2. And if we look back, that's exactly what we got last time. So method 2 gives us the exact same answer. 
Now, in this example, this one was kind of long and drawn out using method 1. So I would have preferred to use method 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is determine the LCD. The LCD of all the fractions involved is x squared, y squared. Because this has two factors of x. That has two factors of y. That only has one factor of x. So we need two factors of x's and two factors of y. Now, method 2 says multiply all the terms by x squared, y squared, the LCD. And if we do that, if I multiply this by that term, one of the x's cancels, leaving me with x, y squared. Here, if I multiply this to the first term, the x squareds cancel, leaving me with 1 times y squared is just y squared. This times the second term in the denominator, the y squareds would cancel, leaving me with x squared times 1. And that is the simplified solution. Now, sometimes we'll deal with negative exponents. Hopefully, we recall our rules of exponents. A negative exponent just means to take the reciprocal of that value to that power. So here I have 5 times x to the negative second. Well, if we know our rules of exponents, this value only applies to the x. Same thing here. So any time I see a negative exponent, I'm going to rewrite it as a positive by taking its reciprocal. So I'd have 5 times 1 over x squared, which would just be 5 over x squared, minus 3 times y to the negative first. Well, that just means 1 over y. So I put y to the denominator. Here I have x to the negative first, which is 1 over x. Here I have y to the negative first, which is 1 over y. Now it's just like the previous examples. I can choose to use method 1 or method 2. Method 1, I would combine this to be a single fraction and this to be a single fraction, and then multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. Or I could use method 2, which I prefer. I'm going to find the LCD. I have x squared and 1y. And those are the factors I would need in my LCD. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by that LCD. Essentially, I'm just multiplying by 1, a value over itself. When I distribute it, this becomes 5y. Distribute it to this, it becomes 3x squared. Distribute the, to the de, uh, denominator, one of the x's cancels. And distribute it to the second term in my denominator, the y cancels. And if we look at this, I could factor out an x, but there's no x I can factor out of here. Nothing's going to cancel. This is the simplified expression. Now, wait, I have one more here. This one I'm going to leave for you. Change those negative exponents to positive exponents. You get to choose whether you use method 1 or method 2. Either one will get you the same answer. So go ahead and try that on your own and keep practicing. Thank you for watching.